Uh, my name is Park Tae Ng from Singapore, and thank you very much for inviting me to the ARC. Now, obviously, culturally and geographically, uh, I am the odd one out here. Uh, you guys complain about being cold, and you guys um, run out when you see the sun. I complain about being warm, and I run into the shade when I see the sun. Therefore, we are quite different. So I hope that you will allow me to say something from a very different culture. And uh, you do not need to agree with what I say. The point is precisely to say something so that it provokes you to think. And in actually disagreeing with, with what I say, it might just help you to think about what you were always thinking and therefore challenging that. So perhaps I would like to start off by saying that the topic today is about excellence and well-being together as a bundle. So usually when we talk about uh, excellence, we'll be talking about things like international comparisons, um, international comparative tests of results, um, performance indicators, and how do we measure those things and how do we measure excellence. And when we talk about well-being, we'll be speaking a lot about disadvantaged students and uh, how to reduce stress issues like that. Now, I think that they have their place and they are important. And in particular about well-being, the disadvantaged, the marginalized, yes, we do have to take care of their needs. And I think that is very important. Reducing, reducing stress, better engagement, those are all very important things. But I think I would like to, to say something a little different down here, and it's merely to, to trigger us to think. Let me go through a metaphor, therefore. Recently, just before COVID-19 struck, Singapore has this uh, wave of young people liking this thing called rock climbing or wall climbing. Now, in Singapore, obviously, we do not actually have much wilderness, and therefore, we don't really have rock climbing. Uh, but what we do is to climb walls. So it's a little artificial, but we have all these, these fanciful walls for young people to climb and it's developing itself into quite a sport. And it's really tough. I realize that it's really not easy. So I haven't, I haven't really tried it myself, but I've seen people doing it and many young people or sometimes families doing it and they, they enjoy themselves. I couldn't, I couldn't phantom why. I mean, for me personally, I'll prefer to play a sport like a badminton or table tennis, something like that. But why would anybody like to climb walls? I mean, after all, I'm not Spider-Man. So, but they look like they are very engaged and they look like they are having fun. But it's, it's pretty tough, isn't it? These are people who love the sport called wall climbing. The sport is actually very tough. It takes quite a lot to climb up that maybe some eight to 10 meters high and some even higher than that. It's like some of these structures were, were at least five stories high for them to climb. And it is tough. You have to train very hard. And in order to get to the top, you actually have to fail many times, learn all the techniques, fail many times before you succeed. But when they're climbing, and when they are climbing rather, they are tired, I'm sure. They are sweaty because they perspire all over, but I think they are happy because they keep doing it. And I have a feeling that they have well-being if you ask them in the middle of perspiring and trying so hard to climb the top, whether they have well-being, they'll actually say that, yeah, they have well-being. Their beings are pretty well. So I wonder why. So I think some of the responses would be that some of the reasons is because the young people, they are doing something that they love, something that they want to not because something that they have been forced to, something that they want to, they are self-motivated, it came from within. And they have an aim, they have a challenge. 
and we are able to overcome the challenge, overcome the barriers, they achieve something and they feel satisfied. And it is tough, but they like it tough. It is precisely because it is tough and therefore it gives them a challenge. And there is joy. They feel joyful because they are doing something they like, they want to, they are not being forced to. They feel that satisfaction. They are learning things. They are growing. And it, when they are in the flow, they can even forget everything. And that is that one thing that really gets them motivated and actually growing, learning and growing at the same time. And strangely, I would say that they don't want you to make it easier. Because from another perspective, you could ask, why don't I just build you a lift? Wouldn't that just take you up to the fifth story? If you build them a lift, they'll be very unhappy with you. No, you are missing the point. The point is I want to climb up there myself. And it doesn't matter whether you or some others would like to take the lift. I would like to do the climbing and I would like to do the climbing myself. So they are doing something tough, but they are doing something meaningful. And they are doing something that actually, strangely speaking, very tough. They are perspiring, they are tired, and yet it is enjoyable. It is actually enjoyable and therefore their being is well. That is well-being. Let me bring you to the next picture. You could see that it is just simply a zoom out. The first picture is a zoom in. This is a zoom out. And I think you will understand that I'm going through a metaphor. This is a metaphor. The message that I'm bringing to you is this. This book represents education. A good education, a good education system creates different pathways, different pathways for children to experience the true joy of learning. These different pathways are pathways such that the children, they are based, they find their own successes. They celebrate their different abilities, interests. They are engaged. They find meaning. They find purpose. They find enjoyment. They actually work very hard to achieve. And they achieve a lot more because they are motivated from within. Wall climbing or rock climbing is actually very demanding, but it can be very meaningful for the climbers. It is a high sense of achievement, a high sense of satisfaction, and also high level of well-being when climbers climb and try to scale those walls. And we finally, when finally, even after many tries, they finally reach the top, that satisfaction of having done something themselves give them a lot more joy than you building a lift for them. Therefore, the same for education. Education is precisely a, something where actually it is not supposed to be, inverted comma, easy, but it is supposed to be meaningful. It is supposed to be something that is designed such that our learners find one. They find themselves wanting to work hard. That is the point. They find themselves wanting to work hard rather than being forced to work hard. They want to work hard because they enjoy that process and they hope to be able to achieve something to their own satisfaction. 
And when they go through that sort of process, that is precisely the confluence, that is to say the overlap, the confluence of excellence and well-being. It is both excellence and well-being. When learners, young people, they work hard, find meaning, find satisfaction, enjoy that process because they are motivated. And the system is designed such that there are enough pathways for them to be able to find their own pathway to succeed for themselves. And it is well-being because they find joy in the process. Now, actually, we don't need to look to wall climbing. I understand that there are actually some people who love to walk the Appalachian Trail. I think in the United States, it's called the Appalachian. And, and it's really strange because it's like three to four days or maybe sometimes a week you have to be hiking. And so if you tell this person that, hey, why don't I just drive you to, from point A to point B, you know? And you don't need to keep walking in the wilderness. I'll just drive you from point A to point B. This person may not appreciate that. He said, I'm doing you a favor. I'll drive you from point A to point B. He says, no, I don't want. I just want to walk. I want to hike. Then you say, it's so tough. You'll be sleeping in the wilderness. He says, I'm happy to sleep in the wilderness. You say that, oh, but you may break your ankle. You may break your foot. He says, yes, okay, fine. Let me break my foot and I will walk that trail again. Now you say, why? Why would anybody want to do that? It's tough. You break your foot and you still want to walk there. Now, that is exactly what it means by the process. It is meaningful and it is full of joy. And this person does not want you to make it any easier. If you make it any easier, you have just missed the point. Therefore, can I go to the next slide? I think I leave you with this key thought. Now, because I come from a very different culture and this saying is generally attributed to Confucius. Of course, he's a kind of Chinese sage scholar about learning. And when he talks about education, basically that is the main thing. Is it not a joy to learn? That's it. Today, I'm not saying that they are wrong. I'm saying that let us think about some of these questions. I'm not saying that they are wrong. These questions are not wrong. But we have been focusing a lot about asking ourselves, how do we measure excellence? How do we reduce stress? How do we engage learners? They are all very good questions. How do we help the marginalized students? I think they are all very good questions. But fundamentally, if we are really talking about excellence, and well-being. The point is this, when we look at our learners, when we look at our teachers, and when we look at ourselves as educators, as leaders within the education system, is their joy? Is it not a joy to learn? So this is a very deep question and there are various things, various pieces that we ought to have. So in Singapore, uh, not that we are very successful. So one, teach less, learn more. That is to say, if teachers actually teach less but teach better, students will learn more and learn better. So better pedagogies, better engagement. That's one. Two, it's not just about students. The thing is that some students think that learning is a pain, it is a chore, but wait till you ask the teachers. Some students don't want to come to schools, but teachers themselves do not want to come to school either. Therefore, main thing, let's start with ourselves. And joy is something that's deeper than just having fun. We can have a lot of fun, but at the end, there might not be a lot of joy. And the last piece, is very important because somebody asked this question, what if I do not like rock climbing? 
What if I do not like wall climbing? Now, this is a metaphor. And that is why that remark that the system ought to have diverse pathways. This example is for someone who likes rock climbing. And therefore, I found that pathway for myself. The system ought to be designed such that there could be diverse pathways so that learners, different learners, based on their own interests and abilities, can find success in their own way. And the success is not going to be exactly the same. The person who likes cooking is not going to be the, exactly the same as the person who likes uh, rock climbing. The only thing is that when we make the whole system so narrow that we focus only on attainment in mathematics, science, languages, etc., And that is where a lot of young people may then be disengaged. I would say that, I, I personally will hope that all education systems you know, treasure our teachers and really, really invest in the professional development of teachers. So in this, it, it is just a metaphor. So if learners climb, then teachers climb those walls as well. It's just that they are different walls. Students are learning, let's say, math, science, or whatever it may be, playing football and so on. Teachers need to learn as well. Learn what? Learn how to teach better. School leaders need to learn how to lead better. And so we all need to improve. But we need to see the significance of what we are doing. I think that is really helpful to the teachers.